Welcome to the ultimate 7 days to die farming guide for consoles. Do you want to know how to quickly raise your wellness? Well stick around because I will be showing you step by step how to set up your farm to make sure you never beg for food in the apocalypse. Hi, I'm Melee Damage 15 and I want to first ask the question, why farming? You might say to yourself, I get plenty of food from the Shamway foods and meat from the wildlife around, why would I need to have a farm? Well two reasons. First, with farming certain crops, you can make the best drinks and food for raising your wellness, which is crucial to your survival. Stick around to the end of the video and we'll talk about what those foods are. Second is to sell those seeds to traders to raise your bartering skill, which makes all items sell for more, and to get lots of dukes. Now there are 11 different types of seeds in the console version. The first few you can find in the wild. Aloe, which is found in the desert. Chrysanthemum, which you can find in the forest. Corn, which is found in the plains. Cotton, which is found in the plains and the forest. Goldenrod, which is found in plains and forest as well. Yucca, which is found in the desert or plains. You can chop the cacti there. And mushrooms, which are found in caves or purchased from the trader. Now, blueberry and coffee seeds can only be attained by looting or purchasing from the trader. The last kind of seeds are hops, and they can only be purchased from the trader, and you also need to purchase the hops recipe from the trader as well. So what you're going to need to get started are seeds, of course, so go loot, purchase, or find some crops in the wild. Next, if you haven't already, turn those crops into seeds. You're going to need an iron hoe next as well. We'll talk about why this is important later. To make this, you will need 16 forged iron and 20 wood. Then, lastly, you will need any plot of dirt. This cannot be clay soil or any other resource. It must be dirt. Now, this section is optional, but I would start with flattening out your area that you will be farming to make sure that you have level ground. To do this, make some frames and place them side by side to flatten the ground. Then, when you're finished, simply pick them up, and would you look at that, you have flattened ground ready for your farm. This next section is also optional, but makes organizing your farming plots so much easier. Use wooden plates to line up your farm. You can create rows like I have here, or you can create a big square. Realistically, the decision is yours. Next, you are going to plant your seeds. But before you do that, let me talk to you a little bit about the different types of soil you can plant your seeds in. These are normal dirt, tilled soil, and fertilized soil. I have an example of each seed in all three different types of dirt or soil. Now, how do you make tilled or fertilized soil? Remember earlier when we created the iron hoe? We're going to use that to hoe the ground by pressing the left trigger. Then, if we have fertilizer in our inventory, when we hoe it again, it will place fertilizer into the soil. Now, why till or fertilize your soil, you may ask? You'll get much more yield from your crops. I'll show you how much in a second. Now, you can plant your seeds, and once you're done, the next step is to wait. Congratulations, your crop has reached the harvest stage. This will roughly take a couple days depending on your game time speed. Also, a quick note that mushrooms take much longer to grow. Here are the yield for each type of seeds. As you can see, in the normal dirt, we only have returned one crop. In the tilled soil, we returned two crops. And in the fertilized soil, we returned four crops. This is the case for all crops besides corn, cotton, and mushrooms. Corn and cotton both return one, three, and five respectively. Mushrooms return two, three, and four respectively. So you can see the importance of at least tilling your soil. Planting in dirt simply returns you the same crop that you planted and you have gained nothing. Now let's collect it all. After you have collected your harvest, you can choose to keep some and turn some back into seeds or turn them all into seeds. My recommendation at first is to turn everything back into seeds until you get a good sized farming plot. I also recommend turning most of your crops into seeds even when you have a good sized plot as you can sell those seeds for more money at the trader. Now I'm going to show you how to make fertilizer. It's a process but it's worth it if you get the resources needed. To make fertilizer you will either need a campfire, a cement mixer, or a chem station. Campfires can be made from the crafting menu for 8 stone. 
You will also need a beaker for the campfire to create fertilizer. You can find a beaker from looting nurses or pop and pill stores or buying them from a trader. Fertilizer in the campfire uses two human turds, 15 nitrate powder, and three dirt fragments. A cement mixer can be found at some traders to use inside of their trader post or can be created in the workbench. The cement mixer is made by using 25 forged iron, four springs, one small engine, and 10 mechanical parts. Fertilizer in the cement mixer uses 10 rotting flesh, 15 nitrate powder, and 10 dirt fragments. The chem station can be found in poppin' pills, hospitals, or crafted in the workbench after learning the skill from your skill menu. The chem station is made by two beakers, one burning barrel, three cooking pots, 15 short iron pipes, and 40 wood. Fertilizer in the chem station uses one human turd, 10 nitrate powder, and three dirt fragments. Now, the chem station is the fastest, but also produces the most heat which means screamers will spawn more often. Choose which one will work best for you. Now, how do we find all these items needed for fertilizer? Nitrate can be found by mining these white rocks found all over the map. Nitrate can also be found in caves. I haven't found a cave on this particular map, but they look like white pointy rocks on top and bottom of the cave. Mine those for some nitrate. You can also find surface deposits of nitrate like this one, or you can always buy some from the traders. Rotting flesh can be found by chopping up zombie gore blocks. Dirt can be found by simply digging with a shovel on any dirt patch. Human turds can be found by looting toilets found in houses around the map. Lastly, fertilizer can be found in the world already made. In the burnt biome, there are these little black spots on the map that indicate fertilizer deposits. When you get up to them, they look like fertilized soil. Simply dig them up for a chance at getting fertilizer. You won't always get some, but keep trying and eventually you will. Now, I said at the beginning of the video that farming crops helps you to make the best foods and drinks in the game for raising wellness. Well, what is wellness? Wellness is simply your health and stamina. When you raise your wellness levels, your health and stamina will go up. This increases to a maximum of 200 or 250 if you purchase all five levels of health nut. Now, there are several foods that raise wellness, but the best one is meat stew. To create this, you will need raw meat, potato, corn, and bottled water. This raises your fullness by 28% and wellness by 1.6%. The best drink to make in the game is either goldenrod tea or red tea. To create either, you will need bottled water and either goldenrod flour for the goldenrod tea or chrysanthemum for red tea. They both raise your hydration by 28% and wellness by 0.2%. Thank you all for watching my version of Farming in 7 Days to Die console. I hope you all learned something new today. Leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more console content. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.